What's up guys, welcome back to So Many Parks So Little Time, or as I like to call it, some Fort Sacraste. So today is a twofer. We are doing two parks. First is our Lebanese Park Trips Drill, and then second is Holiday Park, both of which are on the uh, western part of Germany, and they're fairly close to each other. These are two smaller parks, which is why we're doing both. But starting things off, we are at Trips Drill. Now this is an absolutely beautiful park, and it pains me that we only have a couple hours here. It was either do a half day at the park or don't do the park at all, and we really wanted to at least get a taste of the park as well as try out the uh, roller coasters here. They do have a couple interesting rides here, including the very first suspended thrill coaster by Vekoma, Halzu Budakov. They also have an infinity coaster here and the first Gerslauer roller coaster ever. So yeah, the park is just in a gorgeous setting. The landscaping here is immaculate. The people here are friendly. So let's go check out Trips Drill. Oh, this is adorable. I like this a lot. Look at the clothes on the clothesline. Oh my god, that's so funny. That's so cute. That's fake. That is absolutely a real bird. He's just chilling. He's just chilling.
Paul Zubitikoff is the prototype Acoma suspended thrill coaster, which is the successor to the much maligned suspended looping coaster, which you probably know the world over. You've probably seen one at some amusement park somewhere. Well, I am happy to say that the suspended thrill coaster is much, much better than the suspended looping coaster. The ride is not nearly as intense as the SLC. That's one thing that the SLC has. They have a really compact layout, but the execution is just not good. For the STC, the ride is much more spread out. The forces are much more comfortable. It's not nearly as compact as the SLC. And for that, it does feel a bit more like a family coaster as opposed to like one of the more intense thrill coasters. But I mean, yeah, it is one heck of an upgrade over the SLC. Definitely a great job by Vekoma improving on their inverted coaster design. So the Vekoma family boomerangs, Voldump is probably one of the weaker ones. I've done uh, oh, no. London Loop, I've done Reich, and now uh, Voldump. Even though it is a more spread out layout, it has a solid first half, but then it sort just sort of uh, takes the uh, second half a little too slowly. Uh, still a pretty fun coaster though. So this is a roller coaster that that dude roller skated on. This too has it up in either. But we know it was operating because people were on it. Well, no, Wallaby Belgium had some good. Oh, yeah, Wallaby Wall Belgium had some good stuff. I thought it was one of the least being a Definitely. It's like saw the ride. Oh, it really is. <laughs> <laughs> that ride is. How was it? It's all right. Oh, okay. It's pretty head bangy. Uh, the beginning part is really good. Uh huh. Yeah. 
So we could do Carajo next. Okay. It's literally right up that way. Sure. And then we just go back that way to the map. Yep. So, my nut honestly reminds me a bit of Twister 2, only smoother. The ride is just, uh, I mean, it's not a bad ride. It's not a bad ride by any means. It's just so there. It tries so hard to have a wild layout. It tries so hard to uh, have airtime and positive forces, but it just doesn't do anything with its potential. The ride, it's smoother than most wood coasters, but it has a bit of a vibration to it, which is kind of strange. Fun fact, Mammut is the only wood roller coaster entirely produced and manufactured by a German company. It's actually the same company that manufactured the uh, prefab track for Intamin. So yeah, it's interesting in that regard and also the theming, but honestly not that much else. So glad I wrote it though. There are very few wood coasters on this trip. about it too much I would have gone nuts. <laughs>
JoJo roll? I I think I knew about it, but I completely forgot about First it. First off, it dropped. Yeah. And then it went into the roll. I knew about the drop, but uh. I did not. <laughs> Look at us. Uh, that <laughs> is like. Ugh. <laughs> Carajo is a ton of fun. This was one of the first Gerslauer Infinity Coasters, and it was the very first one with lap bars, actually. It is full of surprises. Uh, it's got a very unconventional layout, at least at the time it was. And then just the surprises at the beginning. It's really, really awesome. I had completely forgotten about all of the surprises, so yeah, you could say that it took me by surprise. The ride is a great fit for the park in that it's very, very thrilling, but it's still very accessible to this park's type of clientele. And it looks very nice in its location. And then the trains are just some of the most gorgeous trains on any roller coaster. I love the sort of rocket effect on the rear of the train. So yeah, definitely a very fun roller coaster and probably my favorite in the park actually. This is essentially the queue for a uh, wild mouse style coaster. This is seriously impressive. Look at all the cobwebs. It's so funny, they don't even come no, in check. No check, just go. <laughs> Looks like the line got significantly longer. Yeah. Uh, so weird. Uh, <laughs> All right, Kerslauer, show us what you got. Whoa! For the bunny hill. Yeah. Dude, look at Germany. You see all Whoa. that's going a bit faster than the morning test runs. It's come to Whoa! That didn't hit. It did not. No. with a lot of trim. Yeah, or that. Whoa! Woohoo! Woo! Whoa! That pop of air time at the end was nice. Yeah. This is a very nice coaster. 
So why are the newer Gerschlauers rough? Because none of the Gerschlauers we've ridden have been rough. Yeah. None. None at all. Gesang Tessel is the very first Gerslauer roller coaster ever built in. I'd say they do a pretty good job. So their bobsled model, which is sort of like uh, an advanced wild mouse. It does have some of the hairpin turns, but it also has a bunch of helices and spirals, bank turns and bunny hills. It's executed very, very well. It's very comfortable and very smooth. So yeah, for the very first coaster, they were off to a very good start. And then, man, yeah, the rest of uh, Trip's thrill. This park is just beautiful. So wish that we could have more time. Like uh, this log flume behind me, I've heard very good things about it, but unfortunately we just don't have the time for it. But we will definitely be back. A return trip is definitely in order. There are just flowers everywhere and greenery and uh, roller coasters. This park just looks amazing.
was Elimnis Park Trip Thrill and this is such a fun park. I so, so wish that we had more time here. But yeah, it was either this half day marathon or not visit the park at all. And I'm very glad that we got to visit. But the day isn't over yet. We're going to continue on just down the road and I'll see you in three, two, even in Europe that's still happening. So anyway, we are now at Holiday Park. Now this park has actually been on my bucket list for a long time because this park has Expedition G-Force, which has probably been on my bucket list for as long as I've been a roller coaster enthusiast. It's not a very large park, but it is owned by the Plopsa Group, which also owns uh, Plopsa Land de Penn, and which we happen to have uh, season passes for. It's supposed to be very busy today, but we decided to go ahead and splurge on the Fast Pass because we want to get maximum rides on Expedition G-Force today. It's an Intamin Mega Coaster, and for the longest time, it's been up there as one of the best coasters on many polling sites. It's time to see if it really is as good as everyone says, and if it really deserves to be on a coaster enthusiast bucket list. So let's go check out Holiday Park. So is Anibus. I just realized in my excitement I forgot to grab a map. Oh, I think Andrew said he liked it. He said this was the front row I can't remember. He said something else. It's basically the Conda prototype. So there are sky screen.
my goodness. Expedition G-Force is absolutely incredible. I have been looking forward to this roller coaster for such a long time and it absolutely delivers. The airtime, it's not only some of the strongest I've been on, but it's so sustained. And then it's just hill after hill and it just keeps the action going throughout the whole ride. There is a little bit of a lull in the middle, but even then the beginning and the end are so good that it just sort of cancels out whatever monotony the middle might procure, but still. Absolutely, Expedition G-Force was so worth the journey out here. I counted 36 flips on the Skyfly. I think that's a new personal record for me. Super awesome ride as always. I love these things. Thank you. 
Skyscream is your pretty typical Superman Ultimate Flight Skyrocket 2 clone, and this one is actually very, very good. First of all, it's called Skyscream, and it is horror themed. You actually have to walk through uh, this haunted walkthrough with uh, jump scares and stuff just to get onto the ride itself. And on the ride, it was the, I believe, the second uh, Skyrocket 2 model. It was the first one overseas, and this one does not have comfort collars. It runs so much better than all the ones that do have comfort collars. It's amazing how much of a misnomer comfort collars are. But yeah, I really do like Skyrocket 2's. Three crazy launches, a very nice backward section. You get some great airtime, whether you're in the front row or the back row. Some hang time on that upper inversion. It's a fun, fun ride, and uh, Skyscream is no exception. By the way, I like how they just kept Super Verbal's uh, corkscrew here. Great way to uh, honor the ride and the park's history. It's a Waffle House. I'm back in America. Reise durch die Zeit teilnehmen können, besetzt die Boote bitte immer in Gruppen zu sechs Personen.
So that was Tripstrill and Holiday Park in Western Germany. And these are two very, very fun parks. For Holiday Park, it's a good park, but it's all Expedition G-Force. Yeah, there's a uh, t-shirt in the gift shop that says, I'm only here for Expedition G-Force, and it's kind of a true statement, honestly. The other rides here, they are fun. I enjoyed uh, Skyscream, I enjoyed the Drop Tower, I especially enjoyed the Skyfly. But yeah, they're definitely missing a lot more supporting attractions that complement Expedition G-Force. But the stuff that they do have supporting it, it is good, and then Expedition G-Force, it's just worth it. So that's going to do it for those two parks. It was uh, two parks in one day. Uh, the next trip, we're going to do one park in two days. So we'll see how that goes. I'll see you all there. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.